So this is a letter that I wrote to our healthcare providers um, trying to resolve billing issues after um, the medical catastrophe that happened to me. Um, I'm going to read it now and I will update it a bit um, because I wrote it some years ago, um, but I think it best expresses what happened to me and um, how I felt about it. From approximately 2010 on, I experienced inter intermittent pain on my right side in heartburn. I went to the ER with what I would later recognize as a gallbladder attack on at least one occasion. I received a call shortly thereafter and was told that my gallbladder was not functioning normally and would have to be removed. I consulted with my surgeon prior to the surgery and was reassured that this was a routine procedure. The surgery was performed on the morning of May 17th. Our pre-surgery research showed that the preferred protocol in cases where the gallbladder looked particularly bad was to stop laparoscopic surgery, open the patient in a more conventional way, and continue. The doctor said that this was not necessary and seemed quite proud of the fact that he was able to get it out laparoscopically. As soon as I was awake in recovery, I reported that I was having searing abdominal pain and that I thought something had gone awry with the surgery. I can only explain this as a, deep, a feeling deep in my soul that something was very, very wrong inside my body. Kathy was um, admitted to Harvard uh, Mercy Care with Dr. Uh, I thought that it was going south because there is no staff there and there is no answers for us. So we decided to start um, keeping a journal, me and my sister-in-law to make sure that we documented everything because it felt like this was not going in the right direction. It's notoriously hard to sue for malpractice um, because doctors are wealthy and they can get really good lawyers and, um, and the, the law always tends to lean in their favor. Um, but it's extra hard in the state of Wisconsin to get justice for malpractice. Um, we sought legal counsel for quite a while um, in Wisconsin and many of the law firms said, you know, this is just going to be too expensive for the re return on investment that they would put into building a case. So finally um, we contacted a firm in Chicago um, and they reviewed our, our stuff and, and got back to us pretty quickly that they thought this was a good case and they wanted to represent us. The person that we ended up hiring was someone that I had found because one of the lawyers that we had initially gone to said, you know, this complication that she had, necrotizing fasciitis, is such a rare complication that the average doctor couldn't be expected to know that, which seemed incredibly lame. The lead lawyer called me on a good Friday of 2012, I believe, that he said there was some mischievous behavior that he thought was something that he could uh, use in court and he could see that we had been done wrong and that um, he felt like the doctors w were not straight with us throughout the whole process as per the journal that we had, we had uh, kept. The one I spoke to, he also spoke to Kathy and Joe, said that this was one of the worst cases of neglect he's ever seen. One of the things I thought was very weird was that no one ever offered to meet us in person, which is like, you know, who 
what kind of lawyer representing a, a plaintiff wouldn't want to meet a person who went through this kind of ordeal? I got a phone call one day from the lawyer saying we have decided to dismiss your case. And she said that it, our, the case will be dismissed with prejudice. Um, and um, unfortunately, this means that you know you that this is the end of the line for you guys. And you know we're really sorry, and we really hope for the best. But that's how it is. And um, it was beyond devastating. Kathy was so incredibly devastated that I felt like I needed to call her and find out exactly what happened because I simply didn't understand. And she told me that the reason for this, the reason that this case was dropped was that Kathy never had necrotizing fasciitis. And she simply had a bile leak, which is a pretty common complication of gallbladder surgery. It can be very serious, but it's pretty common. At no point was this determined that she in fact did have this. They guessed at it early on and did a procedure that was supposed to fix it, and it didn't fix it. Um, so she, so when I talked to this lawyer, I said, she said that she did not have necrotizing fasciitis because fascia means skin, and it, her skin wasn't involved in it. Now, fascia, in fact, doesn't mean skin. I mean, just knowing, you know, what my family and I have been through, and then knowing that there would be no justice, that no one will be held accountable for this whatsoever, it's probably the worst feeling I've ever felt in my life. It was just appalling that after everything she had been through, that there was medical malpractice, clearly. Now there was legal malpractice as well. They basically dismissed the case, which, which I understand was with extreme prejudice. The lawyer from McNabal, Ruth, told us that that is what they were going to do because they didn't feel they had enough evidence to, to take it to trial. Around the time that all of this was happening to Kathy, um, in fact, when she was still in the hospital, I had someone who happened to be a customer come in and say that I should call a chiropractor that had, that had an office in the same area and talk to him about what happened to him with Dr. <laughs> the same surgeon that Kathy had. And he was actually still in the hospital at the time. So I waited a little while and I called him and he said, he told me that what had happened to him, and this was all right around the same time, is that he had had an ongoing problem with his appendix and it was like a chronic thing. So he had it taken out laparoscopically the same way Kathy had her gallbladder taken out. And a couple weeks later, he was woke up in the middle of the night, doubled over in pain, and he ended up going to the emergency room. And that particular doctor was not on call. There was another doctor there. And he didn't, he just was in a lot of pain. His stomach hurt. He didn't think it was necessarily related. But, so they did an ultrasound, and they said, well, the, we know what the problem is. You have to have your appendix out. And he said, I just had my appendix out a couple weeks ago. And he said, they said, no, you didn't. Here it is. And they showed it to him on the ultrasound. Shortly after this happened, you talked to people and you started to hear the, you know, similar thing happened to my brother, to my cousin, to my aunt, to my uncle. And at first it was a couple and then we heard more and more and more, and um, there seems to be an absolute pattern of mismanaged cases and mishandled surgeries. And this this surgeon that did my initial surgery, Doctor, um, was is responsible for some terrible 
outcomes in surgical cases of his. And in fact, there have been cases that are remarkably similar to mine. Um, and just, just a couple of weeks ago, someone came into my flower shop and she wanted to send thank you flowers to the nurses that had been in intensive care because she had had her gallbladder removed laparoscopically about a month ago by Dr. And he took out her gallbladder and she came home and she was in a huge amount of pain, went back to the hospital. They gave her a bunch of painkillers and sent her on her way. And she ended up going back again and again until they finally admitted her and it turned out that she had had a terrible infection of a similar type to what Kathy had. And similar to my sister, no one, no physician there ever told her exactly what this infection was, what it was called. Just that she had a post-surgical infection and that it would eventually get better. As a result of, it just seems like a pattern of negligence, a pattern of um, money before what is right medically. Anyone can make a mistake, I guess. But this is something where it seems to be everyone sort of looking the other way when there's a doctor, at least one doctor here, who is making mistakes that, if it hasn't already, may end up killing someone. She's very, very close to not living through this. And now they were telling me that she didn't have this. And not only was it appalling that this law firm was dropping this case, but dropping it on the basis of something like this that was simply false. Mm -hmm.